The second question that's going to be a live question is from John Goslin, who's here. John, you want to come to the thing? Let me just say as John comes here, most of you know John Goslin from John and Kate Plus 8 and uh, TLC. I'm a TLC television host. Um, let me just say that, you know, fame is something where you get very little chance to tell the world who you are. You just get caricatured. I've come to know John a little bit through his very dear friend, Mike Heller, who's here. Where are you, Mike? And uh, his father, Mark Heller. His agent and his uh, and uh, his uh, lawyer, but, but Mike is a very dear friend who comes to us for shops all the time. And John is a single father who uh, is going through a difficult time. And I have discovered you as a person, and it's very important that America discover you as a person. And th thank you for coming for this values discussion, so you can also bring greater values in navigating the pitfalls of fame. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my question to the panel is, you know, obviously I'm going through a divorce. Uh, it's pretty public, and uh, as a single dad. <laughs> Uh, you know, what two or three values can I use uh, to raise good kids? I have Let's no start with them and ours. Yeah, <laughs> I have no I have no to well, thank God we're not going through a divorce, yeah. but I mean, a lot of celebrities, right? It's very difficult to navigate the fame thing. No, no. Yeah. I, mean, I, I must say, it just, and it, it just to echo, and it came up today in conversation as well, is this whole issue of respect. When you look at a husband and a wife, and you do marital counseling on them, the one telltale sign that it's an irretrievable marriage is when they show disdain to each other, usually through facial expressions. It's very subtle. It's, you know, the dripping of the lip, you know, it's a little bit of a sneer when they make a comment validating something that they think is important. And the kids pick up on that. And one bit of advice, and I'll be short, is that the kids are not going to treat themselves the way you treat them. They're going to treat themselves the way you treat yourself. And so if they see you treating yourself with respect and you have honor going through a very p painful process, which both you and Kate will obviously be public on, but the kids hopefully might get dragged into as much as some might fear, then when they grow older, they're going to say, this is how my dad composed himself at his time of greatest struggle. And that might be the biggest gift you could give them. Respect. Okay, Corey? I, I can't say I know anything about raising children, uh, except for having had... Have your parents raised you? Look, a lot of, they gave you a lot of so confidence. So I will say for brevity, uh, James Baldwin uh, said very simply, children are never good at listening to their elders, but they never fail to imitate them. And to Dr. Oz's point, uh, the, the qualities and the values and the character that you evidence in your daily uh, life is what's going to uh, most reflect on them. I had this moment where I, where I took a some of the police officers that work with me every day to, the, to a Yankee game, uh, and thanks to the generosity of a friend, we had these amazing tickets, but we were split by sections, and there were a bunch of the parents, the cops, and the kids in front, some of the kids didn't get in that special section where all the food was free, and I remember going down, there's these mounds of candies, and I thought to myself, let me just grab some of the candy and hand it back to the kids that didn't get into this section, and all of a sudden I realized, number one, that's wrong, and number two, what, it would be doubly wrong because the kids would be seeing the mayor of the city of Newark, or an adult figure, was willing to compromise a rule so we could have this great candy to their kids that would give them silent permission to behave like that. And my father, I remember, as a boy, told me that story about walking into a, a circus and the, the guy says, uh, 12 and under free, here are some, uh, you're how old your kids? And they said 13, he goes, I would have never known that. Why didn't you just say they were 12? And the father says, because they would have known that, and that's what's important. Mm. So I think the, the values you exhibit on a daily basis are going to be absorbed by the children, by your children. I loved what happened on Brick City where you revealed, and I never knew this, and I know, I've known you for 20 years, Corey, that your mother and father used to take you to the circus but insist that you choose three friends yes. to bring along. Yeah. It was very nice. You never told me that story. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we still lot to get to know each other. Sure. Okay, so we have imitation as opposed to preaching. They're going to yeah. copy you. Yeah. Respect. Remember, those are one of the three values by which to raise children. And your son, Alicia, as I was telling you and your wife, is such a special young man. He's an incredible, incredibly devoted to his parents, so uh, eloquent and so mature, really a very special, special person. How do you raise good kids? I can this so negatively. I have seen in my life that those so-called famous people Many of them have problems with their children who rebel always because the parents are hypocritical. A child resents hypocrisy of the parents more than anything in the world. But the parents say one thing to the child, do this and do that, and they themselves do something else that is the end of a relationship. It will take a lot of psychiatrists, psychotherapy, for, for, to, to, to restore a kind of relationship. 
So therefore, what parents should learn is to always be truthful and not to be hypocritical with their children or in general. Okay, no hypocrisy. <laughs> Set the right example and always show respect. And I like that amendment because so often we expect our kids to respect us. We don't necessarily feel that, that, that it's reciprocal. Let me also just tell you, John, as, and as we get to know each other a bit more, uh, one of the things that I put down here, but we didn't have time to go through it, uh, is uh, social ills, celebrity obsession. You know, that we seem to be more fixated on other people's lives than on our own, more fixated on celebrities' marriages and making our own marriages better. It's something that comes up in marital counseling all the time. I actually believe that, you know, I'm, I'm not someone who's been immune to wanting attention. You know, my children, uh, uh, I speak to my kids all the time about this. My parents divorced when I was a boy. And uh, maybe I didn't get the love that I needed. They loved me infinitely, my parents, but they were wounding each other. And when you're experiencing that kind of pain, you often don't have the love to give. So I wanted to do good things in my life. And Corey saw from the, my early 20s, I did good things in Oxford, but it was important that it be recognized. As I, got, as I got older, and especially after the tragedy of Michael Jackson's life, I learned one thing. You start life thinking you want to be recognized. You end life knowing you want to be respected. You want people to take you seriously. Mehmet Oz is one of the first people I look up to most in the world because of how serious he is as a celebrity. But I said to Mehmet when he was about to launch this massive TV show, which is, you know, a, a, this cultural trendsetter, I saw him save a life, you know, and you can go on TV, but nothing will ever replace the surgery he does. And Mehmet continues to operate twice a week and it's doing his TV show, which is unheard of. Or Corey, who is a huge celebrity now, but because of what the good stuff he's doing in Newark. Or Professor Elie Wiesel, who's been on the world stage for 50 years, but his fame comes from his contribution, and he never seeks it. He, he comports himself with so, so, such, so much humility. And I say the same thing to you, that I, I've met you, and you're very soft-spoken, and uh, your heart is not known to the world, and you have a very good heart, and I know that you will have the best of intentions. But you can get caught up in this celebrity thing like this, and you can be lost. And I sometimes found that I was going to get there. I have to tell you, I will reveal a conversation tonight. Professor Wiesel has been an amazing guide and friend to me. After, uh, and I wanted Michael Jackson to benefit from him, and I took the two of them to meet, and, and Michael's life ended tragically. And I called Professor Wiesel to apologize after a certain meeting that, that Michael didn't stay the course of things that Professor Wiesel shared with him about the need to be serious and the need to use, that fame was a, was a responsibility. Professor Wiesel famously said to me, and he's given me mild rebukes throughout my life because he loves me and cares about me and doesn't want me to go off the deep end. He said to me, Shmuley, you keep on thinking that you can change Hollywood. What happens if it changes you first? And you know, John, you've got to keep his words, uh, and I'm sure you remember the conversation with Eliezer, you've got to keep those words in mind. It's great to walk down the street and people recognize you, but, but, but you have a good heart, and you've got these eight kids, and I have nine kids, that's one of the reasons we can bond, and we have to raise good kids. Because as I always say, who, are you really a success in life if the people who mean the most to you think the least of you? Cory Booker's on the phone day and night telling me, Shmuley, Keep, keep, keep your, you know, stay grounded. Day and night, right, Corey? It's the main thing you've told me throughout my life. And all the people who love me tell me that, so I'm telling you the same thing. I wish you every success. It's my opinion, as I've said to you, that your kids should not be on the show. And I know you're fighting to get them off the show, and I hope you're successful in that regard. But to the extent that you are a celebrity, consecrate your fame to a higher cause. I hope that some of the things that you heard today, these values, you'll share with others, because you, are, you have a microphone to the world. You've become one of the most famous people in the country right now. And you can spread that very valuable message. And thank you so much for coming tonight. And God bless you. We really appreciate it. Thank you.